the hair, making sure it looks good, the lighting is perfect, the makeup looks great. Yeah. Do me to a tiger! <laughs> Alright, you ready? Yeah. Alright. Five, four, three, two, one. Alright, I think I need to take your ranger shirt away from you because that's the wrong dinosaur. But that's the one you're getting to shame you and your family. You should be shamed out of the club. Two, three. It's time. Pass it on. We got this. We're gonna put this in the blooper section, actually. Oh yeah, because there was a crossover with Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. You weren't in it, but what were your thoughts about that? I thought it was very cool. I used to really like the turtles, and we used to get compared to the turtles all the time. I used to be like, oh, I do a show Power Rangers, like, oh, that cartoon, the Ninja Turtles, and I'd be like. <laughs> no, ma'am. We're the Power Rangers. Who? <laughs> Soon you'll find out. So. question it's, it's I don't take it lightly so again thank you yeah. thank you I, I think Dave has, has hit all the points uh, you guys are old enough you know after 20 years everything becomes a classic right you have a car in your garage it's like 17 years old who cares all of a sudden it's 20 years and it becomes something just like stocks or anything else the Power Ranger brand the reason why I think is because you all can express yourself now as being older a lot of people were told not to watch Power Rangers because it was violent this and that, we had to always protect the brand. Love you guys. Um, besides playing the characters you were already playing on television, with uh, Teenagers with Attitude, did you guys also either voice any of the monsters or dress up as hotties, tangas, hogs? <laughs> no, I didn't, but I do remember when they were making noises like putty, it was like, it's like, <laughs> all right. And I remember we did shift in the turbo, and then I just said, oh, what are we going to do, turn a car? And that became, what's well, in the turbo? But, uh... <laughs> Uh, we are so glad that you are here. This is your house, San Diego yeah. Comic Con, treating you. Very busy, not just for actors. I think for a fan, I walked yeah. across the floor, and it's just like extremely hard to walk around. But I'm gonna tell you, it's a nice con. Um, it's, I, I think, it's a fan. Uh, a lot of commercial stuff. I mean, fans yeah. would definitely love it, but but uh, a little bit more commercial than normal cons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a lot of business things going on and booths, and there's a ton of things for you know, people to look at. I mean, you look any which way, and a 
next to to uh, Lionsgate, and we got the Expendables, and we got yeah. the Walking Dead people walking around. I don't know how you fans do it, and how you all can. I mean get everything in in one day and yeah. I, I do appreciate fans waiting for me I'm, i feel honored and blessed that i'm a i'm that much part of your <laughs> san diego comic-con day I so know. um but i appreciate it well we hope to see you in the next expendables oh that would yep. be awesome we actually you're right we've gone 96 hours without sleep hoping to meet you and see you so uh, we're just so blessed and thankful to finally yep. get a chance to talk with you and we'd love to hear more about jesus and tap one of yep. your organizations can yep. you tell us about um, our viewers what that's well, about i started a company called jesus and tap it's kind of like um, tap out means never quit, never give up. Okay. And I was thinking of who I can, you know, that the world needs a champion, and we got the best champion of all times, which is Jesus. And he doesn't need to, he doesn't need to be advertised or promoted. Yeah. Everybody knows him. And I wanted to get a brand that was like, you know, um, driven towards God because he never quit, never gave up, and he was crucified for our sins. And I was able to represent a lot of UFC fighters wow. and uh, pretty much fighters from around the world wear it, and they're proud of it. And um, very happy so you can check it out on jesusdentap.com okay. um, and uh, it's just something that I that I did years ago but I never wanted to jump in front of the brand to yeah. be like hey it's Jason Frank and I'm a Power Ranger and you know I have a Jesus Didn't Tap brand so I let it just brand itself and then two years later UFC was wanting to know who the owner was and so you know I just came yeah. forward I, I just wanted to step behind the name and you know because God's like the most uh, important thing and I wanted him to you know to, to change people's lives around Absolutely. the world and I guess it will get a chance for people to talk about it yeah I get different reactions like oh what's that mean or right. ha 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 that's funny or you know little jokes here and there but the bottom line is you know they're talking about God and yeah. they're talking about Jesus so that's just my job and I feel like you know God put me here to meet people and meet people like you guys and do interviews and send a message to some of the viewers and you know, maybe we can change their life through Christ and stuff. That's all. It's such a wonderful, beautiful ministry. And I remember just hopping over to your website accidentally, and I thought, how cool is that? And we just bought some shirts, too, so hopefully we can represent yeah. your organization. Yeah, sure. So thank you so much, You're Jason, welcome. for this wonderful interview and for the Christian Comic Art Society as well. Hopefully we'll see you at the panel with us next year. Yeah. And do you mind if I ask you one more favor? Sure. Can we? Can you show me how to work? Yeah, let's, okay, let's right do that. Up. All right, let's use the mic as a morpher, mic. all right? Okay. So we're going to use it. Like that? Gotcha. All right. All right. Here we go. When I say it's morphin' time, we're just going to put our hands out right. and morph. Ready? Ready? And it's morphin' time. Morphin' time. All Thank right, you. Baby. All right. Let's use the mic as a morph. All right. Okay. So we're going to use it. We're just going to do it like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. All so right. here we go. When I say it's morphin' time, we're just going to put our hands out right. and morph. Ready? And it's morphin' time. Morphin' time. Thank right. you. Thank you. Oh, Enjoy right. yourself at the con. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Oh, Well, with Jason David Frank, and you're watching Geek Rock TV. San Diego Comic Con 2017. Joining me right now is Jason David Frank. You know him well from Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, playing both Green Ranger and White Ranger. Mr. Jason, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you guys so much, and we appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it's an honor. I love it. Yeah. Uh, San Diego Comic Con. Here we are in the nice, beautiful garden over here. Yes. Thank you so much for you know inviting us here as well. Um, it's been a while since you've last been here, right? 2014? Yep. Uh -huh. Where have you been, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I love San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. Uh, every time I come to San Diego Comic-Con, it seems like I'm doing stuff for Saban, and yeah. now I'm doing stuff for Lionsgate. And we have a kind of combination of stuff that we're doing here with uh, a few vendors and, uh, you know, Lionsgate with yep. the, uh, you know, the Power Ranger Legacy War Games there. And, uh going to stop by Bondi because yeah. you know got to support the love over there awesome. and uh, sign a little some stuff for him and take some pictures so man I've been everywhere but yeah. uh, I love San Diego Comic Con so I'm very excited to be back awesome for you to be back here we've been kind of rooting and praying for you here to come back so let's start with the panel you guys got something go um, going on here it's called bad in the Sun Can yes. you give us a little tease about what's gonna go on on Friday night yeah well I'm very honored and happy to work with bat in the Sun yeah. um, Aaron and Sean his dad are pretty much the directors and creators of this and uh, Bad in the Sun's been a big part of my life for as far as even revamping yeah. Power Rangers. You know, we did the White Ranger beat down with Scorpion. We did the Green Ranger beat down with Ryu. Yeah. And they're actually taking the Green Ranger Bat in the Sun character that Aaron and Sean revamped. And they're using it in the Power Ranger War Legacy game. Okay. So that's pretty much Saban approved. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, it's great. We're going to be talking about... Lots of stuff. We'll be talking okay. about Bat in the Sun, the Superpower Beatdowns. We'll All be right. talking about the Valiant Project. Uh, it was my role as Bloodshot on that. And uh, we're probably going to be talking a little bit of uh, Transformer stuff since oh. I was announced doing the uh, 
the the uh, role of uh, emissary in the new uh, Transformers Machinima Hasbro project. So nice. shout out to Saban for being so good to us, and even for the fans who've been around for the last 20 plus years. Yep, 20 so, 25 years. That's a long time. Dang, you're that. getting old. I know. I, I just I'm revealed kidding, my age. <laughs> I think I just revealed my age. Me, if she revealed her age, I how am I supposed to feel? People come up in my line and they're like, "Oh my God, I grew up watching you," and they. They're tall and yeah. they look older than me. And people are like, what do you do, man? How did they grow up watching? I was like, well, they grew up, you know, like 10, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. I'm turning 44, oh you know, and a 10 year old or a 20 year old yeah. is that that's the age now, you know? And yeah. we even had teenagers at one point watch the show, but they were in denial. Yeah. They were kind of hiding it a little bit, right. you know? And uh, too too cool for school, and now I think Power Rangers is pretty much cool for everyone. Yeah, you know, it's, there's something about that nostalgia about that decade, you know? I, I wish, you know, I think the millennials are definitely catching on and really seeing that the 80s and 90s were actually really the best decades for television and movies. I, I think so too. I did a uh, rock magazine from the 90s the other day and yeah. we were talking about what's the best thing from the 90s and you know and I, I think, I mean, we were the number one kids show in the world yeah. before social media, before Google, oh. before Instagram. I mean, we had to do it the old fashioned way where mm -hmm. they like hitting buttons and sending notes on, on horses. Well, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, we did it the old-fashioned way, okay. and uh, I was excited about that, and I, I think the best thing about the 90s, which I love social media, is that you had to pick up the phone and call someone, you yeah. know? Yeah, and you can have the option of just going, taking the phone off the, off the hook, yeah. you know? And then the call waiting came, and then you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do with call waiting now? Yeah. And uh, now you can just pinpoint wherever someone is, and you'll get yeah. a chance to see, and you know, I'm, I'm really in that, the social media, so I think good, good. Yeah. people, I, I plug up their their feed page, you know, yeah, their page. Yeah, it really but. worked out for you guys too because everybody wants to like, be like, okay, where are they now, you know, because we want to see yeah. more of you guys on the screen, but yeah. social media, thank goodness for that, we get to keep in touch and yeah. and see where you guys are at. Now, going back to Bad in the Sun, um, any possibility for another match? You know, we have so many things going on right now with Bat okay. in the Sun. We have a couple projects, some original projects that we're, uh, that we're actually already filmed and, and getting dis uh, distribution on it. Right. But uh, big Bat in the Sun yeah. fan. So I think uh, there's always a possibility. Okay. And, you know, Aaron and his dad did do this for fun. We would just have to think of the perfect match. I originally wanted the evil Green Ranger to go against Darth Maul. I thought that would be really cool. You know, I know Ray. I thought that would be just a good, uh, good blend there to do. Yeah. But um, there's always there are superheroes battling around the yeah. world. Every day, and I'm sure Bat in the Sun is going to be doing some more of that. Do you have like a little wish list? Like, oh, I would be so great. You know, I do love Wolverine, and yeah. if I did battle him, I would be honored to die yeah. by his claws. Yeah, I, I saw the Wonder weird, Woman one over there. Yeah, that yeah, you know. So, uh, I, you know, I would love you know Bloodshot to do a beatdown because I was the first character to play Bloodshot, which yep. would be really cool. Uh, even with Mike Rowe, I mean, uh, Mike Rowe is Ninjack, but yep. he played Did Shot and Arrow. So, hey. That'd be cool. Get Mike Rose, did shot. I'll play Bloodshot, and we we'll do a super battle. You know, be easy. That would be sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Let's talk about your series, My Morphin Life. Any chance to see another upcoming season about that? We do have. It's funny because we just I just approved season four. Awesome. Um, we have four already edited, uh, and starting with um, the waiting room episodes, which I did with Bad in the Sun yep. and Lathan Warlick, and just a bunch of stuff that we have going on. So I just approved season four. The seasons have been jumbled a little bit. Yeah. You know we. We uh, sold the show to Con TV for uh, you know season two and season three, and then Bat in the Sun picked up season two again because oh, okay. you know of the YouTube, and then we're sponsored by Loot Crate. Yep. So we're sponsored by Loot Crate season two. So when we release season four, everyone's going to be like, "Which season is this?" But yeah. I kept the episodes very neutral, uh, so you can kind of tune into any season okay. and uh, check it out, and you know, and then of course, God bless my mom. She passed away not too long ago, so. The different seasons you might see her in one season the other season but i, I did that on purpose because okay. i want to celebrate her life you know oh, so sure. it's uh, it's gonna be a good good one good season okay. now let's talk about the new generation of power rangers wow yeah oh man so now we're up to 15 television series three motion pictures and almost 130 cast members yeah what 130 is wow what's, your, what's the secret formula i mean how is the show still going well i think you know when when it comes to, to power rangers um, I've been relevant for the brand for mm -hmm. so long yeah. and you know just doing Dino Thunder and going back to the superpower beatdowns going back to the reunion episode and yeah. then a lot of other plans we have in the future and the superpower beatdowns I've been consistent with the brand yeah. and uh, in, in Power Rangers in general just has everything that you want to see they have yeah. 
the karate in general is nice. You could just look at karate and it's captivating. Yep. Um, you know, and when you had the colors and you have the karate and you have the, you know, the storylines, I do feel that our, our not just because I'm biased, I do feel that our seasons were the best because it was a continuation soap mm -hmm. opera for kids. Yeah. You know, sometimes you do a, a season and then it's over and, you know, a couple years. Back then, they would do it every year. Yeah. So Saban sold the brand to Disney for a lot of money. Okay. Uh, and then the Disney brand, it really started, the ratings, I know fans don't want to hear this, but the ratings dropped on Disney really bad. Right, right. To the point where they asked me, hey, will you come back on Dino Thunder to pick up ratings? Okay. So I went back to Dino Thunder to pick up the ratings, and it picked up a bit, uh, but the brand was still going down. And once Heim bought it again, Heim okay. Saban, they bought yeah. the brand back. It just skyrocketed, right. you know, because we have Netflix and we have the, yeah. you know, all this stuff on on the internet. Yeah. So it's become, uh, you know, Saban wanted it to become a household name, okay. and it's definitely been a household name. Uh, and it's just everything kids want to see, and it's just not kids. We have such a loyal fan base mm -hmm. that we are now in a comic book. You know, with Boom Studios, yep. and we're we're in DC. We, yeah. Power Rangers were never a part of any universe. No. We just started it, and uh, you know that's why when I'm doing Bloodshot, I'm part of the Val universe. I feel like I'm a yeah. comic book character, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it's exciting, and the brand's been really good. So when Heim brought it back, it just you know got right back up again. When I was on Dino Thunder, I yeah. turned invisible for a few <laughs> reasons. It wasn't just the invisibility powers yeah. that fans would like to know. I had to run, you know, my I'm a businessman too, so I had schools. So we were filming in New Zealand. I was a little bit, oh my, you know, six months is a long time to go yeah. out there. So I was like, I got to visit my schools and make sure my corporations are great. So they said, well, how are we going to write you out? I'm like, well, just make me invisible. So okay. I was invisible, and I just came back to do the voice, the voiceovers, you know. Yeah. So I was invisible for about ten episodes, which is it was important to know yeah. that. No, so. it also makes people appreciate it more too. Yeah. You know, it just comes to show you, like, wow, you know, there was a cult following, yeah. dude. And then 20 years later, you start to realize, like, wow, it actually paid off. Yeah. So it's really good to see all that nostalgia and reminiscence of the past. Um, with the going back to the Power Ranger, the new generation, is there any chance of you making a cameo with the new project? You know, um, I know Saban's always got stuff up their sleeve. Yeah. Uh, you know, and um, I think Saban's been really great about keeping things. You know, secret mm -hmm. for the fans. Mm -hmm. That movie thing was really hard to keep a secret. Mm -hmm. I had two cameos, um, and then one of the cameos was cut, and then I didn't know if I was going to be in it, so I went back to the fan base and told the fan base, hey, I'm not in the movie. The rumors are the rumors, which was true at that point, and then Saban called me back to do another reunion. So okay. I don't like lying to the fans. I was just kind of saying, we'll have to wait and see. I think we'll have to wait and see with everything with the brand, uh, you know, because I think Power Rangers now is just on the verge of of really breaking out to a lot of different, you know, a yeah. lot of different universes. You have Batman, then you have the TV show Gotham. Yes, yeah. That you know they can do anything with the, with the brand, and yeah. uh, I think the fan base is there, and it, it's become, you know, the Green Ranger, the White Ranger alone has become mm -hmm. such a icon because the way they branded it. Yeah. You know, they branded it very unique, very special, uh, and it was uh, exclusive. Yeah. You know, and um, so I, I I think just protecting that brand, but also, you know, going social media for the last ten years. And, yeah. And really trying to do the best I can with numbers and, and, and depositing in my fans' emotional bank yep. accounts. <laughs> yeah. No matter what, like doing these interviews, I'll do anything. And I, I just, you know, and thank you guys for doing yeah. this stuff because then people around the world are able to enjoy this interview versus me just being in my room waiting to yeah. hit the con floor, you know? Thank so we appreciate for that. I mean, it yeah. really definitely worked out a lot for the people who are into the creative arts yeah. as well. So it's great yeah. that, you know, it took some time. We had to be patient and, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, all that stuff. So yeah. before we uh, wrap up um, and get to our Ninja Turtle questions, let me also talk about um, your faith. Um, Jason's also a believer of Jesus Christ and he's a brother of the Lord. Can you share with us how your faith influenced you in your life and your profession? Uh, man, I, I tell you, I'm, now that I learned there's 130 Rangers, at one point, it was 112 back or 100 way back then, a couple years. I just feel truly blessed, um, you know, just to be here for my fans and, and for the fans to be here for me. Yeah. And sometimes people look and they wonder, oh, what's the trick? Yeah. What is JD? I'm not, I'm not, you know, there's a lot of other believers. I just really strongly believe in my, not just in the God, but what I'm here to do, mm -hmm. I'm destined to do. You know, it's just like my calling. Sometimes. Yeah. You know, God puts in your career maybe a you know a couple years of acting, and then your calling becomes something else. This is my calling. Yeah. This right here is my calling. To let everyone know that life was tough at one point for yeah. me. It was tough. My, I lost my brother years ago, 12, 13. I can't even keep track anymore. But it was a very traumatic time in my life, yeah. and everybody kept saying, "You need God. You need yeah. God. You need God." And uh, 
I got tired of hearing about it, to be honest. I was like, yeah. one more person tell me I need God. Yeah. They're probably going to go see God themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I heard it, and yeah. I, I was thinking, man, I'd love to to have a relationship. Yeah. But I didn't want to be public and, you know, push religion or down anyone's throat because yeah. it's not religion, it's relationship, yeah. you know. I talk to people by, by myself anyway, so I might as well say I'm talking to God <laughs> so people don't think I'm crazy. Yeah. But uh, I truly do feel blessed just by blessing other people is is yeah. a blessing for me i cannot get through the, i've been on tour for the last five years yeah. every week and done 40 shows i don't get paid those parents fees if you want to get something at the table you can if you're not you're going to leave happy yeah. that's my motto and i'm going to stick to it and yeah. i'm not changing it i'm not going to just rush through people it was my thing that it was a hobby yeah. you know i have corporations as a hobby for me so it was one of those things where i'm not going to stop that and i can only count the blessings getting through this yeah. stuff i don't care about the money i and, and, and uh, Scott knows and, and Trey who helps me out. I sometimes just like, come on, man, let's get him through. I just, ah, yeah. Let's go. Let's get him through because I, I, I want to count the blessings, yeah. not anything else than that. And that's the trick. That's the truth. I mean, uh, he's done a lot of shows. He's here today. He's a DJ and he's a performer. And uh, he's been with me for lots of years on shows. And mm -hmm. he, the True Color show, I have yeah. people that met me five, six years ago that I'm like, let me hook you up. And they're like, no, it's all right, JDF. You already hooked me up five years ago. And I'm like, oh. Good thing I was nice to him, but I'm nice to everybody. <laughs> Kyle Higgins, including, who's yeah. writing the pom the comic book series. Wow. I met him at a con at the very worst cons of my life when I lost one of my really good friends. Uh, and I found out that day, and I was devastated. And I had to go out and be there for my fans to get it off my mind as well. Yeah. And I met Kyle. He was the last guy. He came in, and I said, hey, buddy, is there anything I can do for you? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I just want to, I'm here to meet you. And then years later, his dream, he's, he's writing the, the awesome comic book series by booms i mean wow. by boom and it's just amazing and i met the guy so i would imagine if the conversation went worse and i wasn't nice to him maybe i wouldn't even be in the comic yeah. book so thank you kyle <laughs> yeah i hear you i mean you're definitely an inspiration and a role model for a lot of you know that you know the newer generation they're kind of lost you know with their faith right now and people have been burned and stuff and there's a lot of confusion with the world that's going on so it's really great to also see you as a role model and see what you've been doing and spreading you know the gospel and the message and so it's really great I, we always appreciate you uh, talking about that um, there are people who want to pursue this as a ministry you know the you know Christian actors you know do you have one tip of advice for them you know I, I mean I started a company Jesus and tap yes. which was you know the clothing line which we're still just revamping the website um, I think the biggest thing for, for t to reach people is to reach people through their individual issues mm -hmm. that they have I don't think someone you know can just Sometimes people can just turn to the Lord, but sometimes they have to go through stuff, yeah. you know, and, and, and to getting through them with saying, hey, you might be depressed like I am, or, you know, you might have ADD like yeah. I do. I just want people to know that, you know, the, the, the world's full of entertainers yeah. that, you know, and, 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 you know, we just lost one today who's an awesome singer. Um, Lincoln Park there and and it, oh. it yeah and 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 he he couldn't take it and you know he committed suicide and I was telling all my fans today that sometimes you have to face your problems you know and turn them over to God or or just deal with it because we walk around with clouds over our head all the time yeah. and we look up and there's no sunshine and those are the people that are just so depressed that there's no hope there's no hope because they're just looking up they're not yeah. looking around to see all the blue sun they're not looking around they're not stepping outside they're not trying to dodge the cloud you know we got to deal with it you got to fight through it and let the sun shine through so that will help with God mm -hmm. and everything that we've done and all the actors that can spread the message it's always great you know mm -hmm. I'll post something about God and I'll get like two or three haters but then I'll get 30 followers because you can't stop the motion. Yeah. You can't stop it. You know what I mean? You can't compete to the only one that's been there that's a true champion. Yeah. I've been knocked down so many times, yeah. and I stand back up again. The only difference is I've never been knocked out, even in real life, but even in life. Yeah. You get knocked out, you stay on the ground, you whine, you cry. you got to get up and look around. When a door closes, there's plenty other doors of opportunities, mm -hmm. and we just have to do that. And the words we speak control our thoughts. And you have to be careful what we speak. Because yeah. if we speak something negative, you're going to start believing it. Like, I can't do that. I'll never be a cosplayer. And that's what happened yeah. to Power Rangers is, you know, everyone thought it wasn't going to be what it was. Yeah. And I believed in it. I believed in it. I'm going to be a superhero. This is going to be successful. I tell you what, 20 years from now, you know, this is what's going to happen. And I, you know, speaking it the whole yeah. entire time. Stayed through the series. Wasn't about money. Wasn't about anything. Right. Consistent in the brand. Because I believed in what God had that anointing yeah. for us to be here right now 
that wasn't by fluke, it wasn't by chance, it was set before, you know, we were born. Yeah. What a beautiful testimony. Gosh, Jason, thank you thank so much. You. Let's wrap it up with Ninja Turtles. Okay. So, um, oh yeah, because there was a crossover with Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. Yep. You weren't in it, but what were your thoughts about that? <laughs> I thought it was very cool. I used to really like the Turtles, and we used to get compared to the Turtles all the time. That's true. I used to be like, oh, I do a show Power Rangers, and like, oh, that cartoon, the Ninja yeah. Turtles, and yeah. I'd be like, no, ma'am, we're the Power Rangers. Who? <laughs> Soon you'll find out. So, I love the Turtles. When I found out that crossover, I was excited to, to yeah. check that out. I hope they bring it back, because there's, you know, you know we're yeah. Just, the turtles are making a comeback too, so we gotta give them some they love. Are. What's your favorite pizza topping? To be honest, just double cheese. All right. Just double cheese. I think when when I was a kid, maybe my mom and dad just didn't want to pay for the extra toppings, no. but uh, just just the cheese. Okay. That's it. I'm a big cheese. I'm a big cheese fan, as you can tell. Power Rangers, a little bit cheesy, and I love cheese, and so oh. do the turtles. And who's your favorite turtle? Raphael, probably. Oh, I could see that. Yeah. Out of the five T uh, Ninja Turtle movies, which one was your favorite? The, to be honest, uh, you know, as a kid, I watched all the turtle movies, okay. uh, and the not the recent one that came out now, but the one you know with uh, Whoopi was in it, and uh, um, it was it was really people were trying to pick it apart, okay. and I thought the digitals looked great. Yeah. I thought it was a good movie. I, I maybe I enjoyed it because you know Jenna don't she didn't know what turtles were, right. so I took her to that movie. Just like some kids don't know what Power Rangers right. was, and they take them to the movie. So I, I liked it. I know a lot of hardcore fans might have not, yeah. but I enjoyed it. That's probably why Comic Con is being so successful because it's just passing it down to the next generation, next generation. Yes, Comic-Con. yes, and and it's Comic Con, guys. Yeah. You guys can have fun. This is where this is why I'm saying with Comic Cons, you let your guard down a little bit, and you just have fun. And that's kind of what Comic Cons are all about. And you could like any character, from Marvel to DC. You could like the Turtles. You could like the Power Rangers. You like any character, and all here we're together, and we 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 belong as one. Yeah. You know, uh, there's no rivalry. There's no DC on that side shouting at the at the Marvel guys. I was a big Marvel collector, guys. So sorry, DC sorry. people out there. <laughs> but uh, but I do like DC too. I yeah. just collected Marvel because Marvel books held value at that yeah. time. And I was a young businessman. I collect them. I would buy one, put it directly in the sleeve, and then I would tell my friend to buy one, and I'd re- read his. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Do you like the slogan, turtle power or cowabunga? Definitely cowabunga. Yeah, I- Definitely cowabunga. All right, we'll close it off on that segment. Thank you so much, Jason, for joining us this evening. Guys, be sure to check out Jason. Follow him online, like, follow, just subscribe, and hopefully you'll see him at Comic-Con this weekend. Uh, we're on day one, so hopefully we'll, we will get a chance to see him soon as well. So thank you so much, Jason, and can we close it out with Cowabunga? Let's do it. One, two, three. Cowabunga!
get ready to play some games. All right.
You guys look awesome. I love it. All right, let's bring out your moderator. You've probably seen him throughout the weekend. He's awesome. His name is Austin Romero, otherwise known as Mike Rome from the WWE. Come on out here, Austin! What's Give going on, LA it. Comic Con? Are you pumped? Oh, man. Are you pumped, Austin? I'm super pumped. Super I'm pumped. Psyched. <laughs> You're crazy. Give it up for her, man. She's been killing it the last couple days. I love all this, all the shirts and the cosplay. You guys, you guys look phenomenal. You guys ready to get to this uh, Power Rangers panel here with these two lovely human beings? I know you guys watched it like I did, grew up with it in the 90s, whether you wanted to be the Red Ranger, the Green Ranger, or the Blue Ranger, it doesn't matter. You wanted to be a Power Ranger, and today we get to hang out with them a little bit. And uh, here's the deal, we're gonna, we're gonna open up, it, it's gonna be a huge part from you guys. We're gonna open up some questions for the audience, okay? So we're gonna have some microphones out there. We've got one right over there on the left side. I don't know, do we have one on the other side? Is that the only one right there? No, there's one on the other side? Okay, cool. Oh, there it is, one right over there. So if you guys wanna ask questions, here's what we ask you to do. Go and head over to one of those microphones right now, that way you have a chance. Since it's a short panel, it's your only chance to get in there and get your question. Time to bring out the men here right now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna introduce them one by one, ladies and gentlemen. He was known as the Blue Ranger. Yeah. Billy Cranston. Please welcome David Yost. And last but not least, you knew him as the green, the white, the red, the black, the list goes on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jason David Frank, also known as Tommy! Good to be here, main stage. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You guys have been busy. How's your week been so far? Dave? Uh, yesterday it was amazing. It was great. We had a lot of people here. Thank you all. T uh, you know, we're totally indebted to you guys. So we thank you so much for being uh, diehard fans of Power Rangers all these years. Without people like you, thank you. Without people like you, we would not be who we are. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. What is it? I concur? I concur. I concur. <laughs> No, for real, guys, we really want to thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. I know I'd like to thank all the Power Rangers around the world who are promoting the brand, uh, who Hasbro has not reached out and said thank you. So on behalf of Hasbro, <laughs> I would like to say thank you to all the Rangers, yeah. keeping Power Rangers alive, number Shots one. Fired. You're welcome, Hasbro. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, thank you guys for all the cosplay. I, I run into so many people that uh, with Davios affirmative uh, clothing line. I, I can't tell you. Everywhere I go, I always take a picture and I see his clothes everywhere, which is pretty pretty brilliant. So anyway, thank you. Good job on that. <laughs> I like it. You dropped a lot of stuff there in like a in like a very short period of time. Now, we have a very short period of time here, so uh, instead of me just sitting here and going back and forth with you guys, I want to give you guys a chance to ask some questions. Do we have any questions out there? Either you got one over on this side or on this side. You already have, you have one? Okay, cool. Uh, hi, guys. You guys. Uh, my question for you guys is, how does it feel for you to, like, the legacy that you guys left behind for us kids like me? I'm 22, grew up watching you guys when I was, like, 10 right after the 90s and you guys pretty much were my heroes and all that. How does it feel for you guys to see the legacy you guys left, the impression you guys left for kids like me and in the whole wide world? <laughs> Obviously, uh, thank you for your question. It's, it's, I don't take it lightly, so again, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think Dave has, has hit all the points. Uh, you guys are old enough, you know, after 20 years, everything becomes a classic, right? You have a car in your garage, it's like 17 years old, who cares? All of a sudden it's 20 years and it becomes something, just like stocks or anything else. The Power Ranger brand, the reason why I think is because you all can express yourself now as being older. A lot of people were told not to watch Power Rangers because it was violent, this and that. We had to always protect the brand, heart and who we are, then I think the world would be a better place. And if we're happy to have an imprint on the world because you're old enough to express yourself now of how how the stories change and, and I was with my daughter and someone said the same thing like you guys inspire me to be a better dad and I went eh 
I got to be a better dad. But uh, it's reminders, and, and being a legend or saying that, it just means we're getting older. You know what I mean? Like, Stan Lee, you're a legend. It's like, oh no. Oh, you're getting higher rank, you know, become a 10 3 black belt. Oh no, it's the end. Making an imprint, making an imprint in the world because of you guys, it really means a lot. And I can sit here with Dave and vouch for him all day long. It, it really, he really takes it to heart, and I do too. We don't take it lightly, so we love your stories and we appreciate you for making, making us better people. For sure. The, the best part of what you're saying too is like when you say like we're icons or legends. These days when you guys come to our tables, I don't know if you've gotten this yet, but people will say, oh, I found your toy in an antique store. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, hey, it's better one, than that, a sale box. <laughs> well, that's we, it. You know, we used to go through, your toy was on sale, and we're like, oh. <laughs> now it's like an antique, but now they're, you know. At the antique store, yeah. Yeah, but now they're at the antique store worth more money than yeah. being in the sale box. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's funny, antique. Don't say that to Don't us. Don't say that to us, please. <laughs> no antiques here. All right, what else we got? Love you guys. Um, besides playing the characters you were already playing on television, the... Uh, Teenagers with Attitude. Did you guys also either voice any of the monsters or dress up as hotties, tangas, hogs? <laughs> no, I didn't, but I do remember when they were making noises like putty, it was like, it's like, all right. And I remember we did shift in turbo, and then I just said, oh, what are we gonna do, turn a car? And that became, what's well, turn a turbo? But uh, <laughs> I didn't do any voices or anything like that. They probably would have made us do almost everything at that point. Uh, but uh, I, I, I haven't done anything like that. Yeah. Be anything else in that show. If you had a chance to go back and do something else in that show, would you or would you stay in your same characters? No, what if your aunt was your uncle? <laughs> it's a whole different kind of problem. The what, the what ifs I, I don't like in life because I don't think we would be where we're at if we had a chance to go back in life because I live today and I kind of want to live into the future. We get asked that question a lot. And I, I mean, it'd be like that, but I wouldn't change who I am and what I've gone through in life because it made me stronger. And, I, and we talk a lot about mental health. It's okay to have that. We just have to work through it and push through it. It makes me a stronger person. It really, truly does. That's just for me. I, and, and I love, I don't want his role. He has too many hardcore lines. He had the most ridiculous lines in the movie. I couldn't pronounce even half of them. I can't even say half of them to today. What was your hardest line? I don't, I mean, there was a lot of hard lines, but my favorite line is a fully sentient, multifunctional automaton. How prodigious. And he would nail that in one take, and I'm sitting there going, and I'm saying, I'm trying to say in forever, forever red, I'm trying to say sea of tranquility, and I'm saying sea of tranquility, and everybody kept laughing at me, and I was trying to say museum, museum, museum. And I'm stuck, those are my words I'm practicing, so every time I, I today, sea of tranquility, it felt good to say that, thank you very Nailed much. Nailed it. Yeah. Hey guys, big fans. Um, I have a really cool question. Uh, Can you Aaron, speak in a little, a little closer? A little closer? Okay. Go. Hey guys, um, big question. So right now there's this trend of old actors coming back and re-rising their movies. For example, you know, the new Flash movie. You just movie. said old. You're about to get beat up. He didn't say <laughs> antique, oh, He didn't say antique. It don't matter. <laughs> old, antique. Just, okay. that's, that's what... He, he would, he, that's what he would tell me and talk about. I don't know if that's still going or... Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I've been developing a, a reunion, 30-year reunion series. Uh, it's a limited series. <laughs> you just said 30. It's just a number. Uh, it's just a number. But it's, it's a limited eight-episode series to begin with. And, uh, you know, it involves the original six... Uh, Rangers, and that includes Trini. So it revolves around all of our characters, and uh, it includes Bulk and Skull as where, well, and where we're at. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a new villain that comes in that's uh, infiltrating Earth, and it's up to the original Rangers to uh, take this on because we're the only people that can save planet Earth. I mean, that's just the base. Uh, I can't really get into all the specifics, but every character is in it. Uh, and you're like reboot, or like really me? Uh, Tommy. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's good. So, uh, so and, and that's, that's, 
That's look. That's what you need. Is you need fans. Even with Bat in the Sun, he's a fan. Aaron Shanky. We know what fans want, and and there's no better person to do that. Now, if David did something like that, of course I'm going to say yes. The only way that we get lost is what David just said. It's just a number, and we become just a number in movies and everything else. Nobody believes into. Nobody believes in you until you can show the numbers. I don't want the numbers. I want y'all hearts, and I want to be part of someone that knows exactly what the fans want. That's it. So that would be my answer. Be yes if David wrote something. Yes. All right. With that said, is there anything they could do to help that along? I mean, certainly. I mean, the the Morphin Power Rangers Quantum Continuum. So, uh, so it's got to be such a hard word that I can't even say. <laughs> two, two hard words: Quantum Continuum. You got time to work on it. Quantum Continuum. So, uh, CC. And, you know, you can just just hashtag Quantum Continuum and then, uh, you know, tag Hashbro. I, I can't say too much, but I, I will let you know that I've had talks. So things are out there, at least talking-wise, and uh, I, would, I really hope uh, that I can get it to come to fruition. Uh, I know most of the actors sort of know about it, but without them signing an NDA, I can't really discuss too, mu too much I about it. I didn't sign nothing. I know. I, I just spilled the beans. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but I really hope that we would have your guys' support. I think you would really like it. Uh, again, it's, it's about the original Rangers coming back together as a team. There's a lot of drama in it. I say it's like Riverdale meets Star Trek meets Power Rangers. So there's a lot of uh, all of that in there. Well, it's about there time go. someone smart steps up to the table, and there's no better person than David Yost because he did play... Billy with all those hard lines. So hashtag Billy with the hard lines. Hashtag, please, hashtag what? Quantum continuum. All right, hashtag me so I know how to spell that. Then I'll hashtag it. That's right. You guys use your voice for that. We want to see that happen. Thank you. Filming or like the first or the funniest or the most heartwarming bonding moments you had, and you realized you were somewhat of a group, somewhat of a team. <laughs> Don't say <laughs> there certainly is a, a charm and an innocence about it because we filmed almost the entire first season without it even airing, so we had no way of knowing how popular it was going to become or anything like that. So I just think that whole first season uh, with the original cast, we were like brothers and sisters and we were really connected. And uh, we Wait, did, we Kimberly did... was my sister? <laughs> that changes the whole no, story. In real life. Off, okay, off screen, yeah. So, uh, but anyways, we had to deal with that every day. And, uh, but he, he's a jokester, so there's, there's plenty of great, great memories that I'm sure that we all have. But I, for me, the entire first season was just so much fun filming. And, uh, and then when we became the number one kids show, not only in America, but throughout the world, you know, our lives uh, got put on a different trajectory, and it's uh, been an awesome ride ever since. So we still bond, uh, and we still have all these amazing experiences together, because now we get to travel. We were in Belgium together. We get to travel all over the world uh, and meet you guys and meet fans of Power Rangers. So it's, it's truly, we never stop bonding. Yeah. And you know what? I'm very proud of being the number one show in the world and is because before social media you understand that was before social media we had to like typewrite stuff you know when they interviewed we'd have to fly and go talk to them in person and everybody was like oh those watches are so cool i wish i had a communicator watch like i said we were the first apple watches apple stole our ideas you know what i mean and uh and billy's come up in his character with a lot of things i'm sure that the world has stole today but um, anyway, yeah, we continue bonding. It's great to have social media and texting. And and uh, my dad don't like texting. He says, it's like writing a letter. And I'm like, it's not. Because writing a letter takes more effort. But whatever. I'll call him now. He doesn't text. <laughs> All right, next question. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jason. So I heard you're a hanshi in uh, karate. And... Uh, show the other actors some moves, and uh, can you actually do a karate kata form right now on stage? Uh, I, you know, I wish I could. I got very slippery shoes on, but uh, uh, the as and, and rip my pants and dragon dagger, all this other stuff might happen. Um, I got tight jeans, but uh, that was an inside joke. Some of y'all might not get, but uh, yes, I, I am an A3 black belt in martial arts. I think the proudest 
uh, moment was that when I was riding in the car with Chuck Norris. And uh, Chuck is like the A3 black belt as well, but he's also a 10th in, in other styles. And we had this talk, and I'm, I was older, right? And he said, Jason, you know, my career didn't start until I was 50. And that's really true. His career didn't take off until he was 50. So that's what motivated me and drove me and drove me to do my own movie, The Legend of the White Dragon, is because I felt, I hearing it from Chuck Norris, sitting in a car with Chuck Norris, someone I grew up with, and uh, it was amazing. This guy has helped me with backflips, gymnastics, all that stuff. I've never done that stuff in my life. People see it, I'm like, oh, okay, backflip, I'll try. Nowadays, I'm thinking, hmm, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> but I've never done gymnastics before, so he would help me with, and Amy, flips, front flips, back flips, back handsprings. I'm telling you, the day I started in my life, I've never done it. I see him, tush, 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 and I said, oh, man, Tommy's got to do something. Like, help me, Dave, and Dave would help me. It'd spot me, and so he taught me a lot. And then I think just showing back and forth certain things, we all helped each other. And uh, karate's been a big part of my life. It's the way of life. It taught me discipline. And uh, it's still to this day is a big part of it. But if it wasn't for Dave and Amy helping me with flips, I probably wouldn't be here right now. I'd be landing on my head. And, and to be fair, before uh, you know, we before we even started filming, we were rehearsing for like a month before we started filming, and Jason got cast. And he came in to hang out with us, and he honestly uh, stepped up to the plate and helped Amy, Joe, and I so much. I can remember him putting us through, you know, some of the moves, just simple moves like kicking our legs over chairs, just so we would get into the motion of, uh, you know, learning how to kick. But then I got in trouble because I remember Haim Saban, the original creator of Power Rangers, came in and saw what I was doing as Billy, and he got upset because Billy looked like he knew how to fight, and he just did not want Billy to know how to fight. So. I had to stop. Well, that's what you get, training with me. Too bad, Sabam. <laughs> so, yeah, no, but we helped each other. It was one of those things where it was great. So. Okay, thanks. thanks. Uh, there you I'm, go. I'm actually a Yondan. <laughs> What's that? I'm actually a Yondan from Pasadena. Okay. Yeah, so, so thanks great, for saying that. That's Oose. awesome. Oose. All right, we have time for one more question right over here. Last question. Hi. Okay, so I'm here today because my boyfriend, Eric Kinzer, he wasn't able to make it because he wasn't feeling well, but this was the day that he really wanted to come out and see you guys. We're in our mid-30s, <laughs> so we remember the OG Power Rangers. We love you guys. We remember dressing up for Halloween and not wanting to take off our costumes. You know, I just kind of wanted to know how you guys feel to know all these years later that us, the older generation, not only do we still love you, but we're also teaching our children to appreciate Truth. the OG Rangers. Truth. You're, you're very smart parents. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. I mean, Dave. Humbling, and it's such an honor, and it's, you know, to see little kids that are now like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all those years, you guys are being great parents by introducing them to the originals, and I'm always surprised to hear how many young kids actually find the original Power Rangers on their own on Netflix, and they really, yeah, it's really mind-blowing, and they still relate to that, that series more than any of the new ones, so obviously it's a huge honor, and uh, we appreciate and are so grateful for you and your husband, and I'm sorry that he couldn't be here today. Make sure you tell him that we said hello. We're saying hi to you, Eric. What's your Eric? husband's name? Eric? You should be rolling your camera. I hope you are. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, you Eric. Are? Yeah, right there. Big shout out. Eric, you said? Eric. Big shout out, Eric. Sorry you couldn't be here, man. We love you. <laughs> but uh, it, it's, it's for me. And Dave, I think it's mind-blowing when these kids come up. Every time I see I go, kids, 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 like I have the news. It's, <laughs> it's happening all over again. So it takes us back being younger because we think, oh, that's you. But in reality, you're you and your parents watch us. So we got three different generations. That's why networks have to listen and not look at numbers, but listen to what fans want with original cast members like Cobra Kai. It's simple. It's a no-brainer, you know what I mean? That's right, and you gotta use the hashtag. We're gonna, we're gonna make this thing happen. Power Rangers Quantum Continuum. Boom, let's hashtag that. So I'm not gonna get the same trap as you, I'm not gonna try to say it. <laughs> I'm not, but, uh, but, but uh, I'll, I'll definitely do that. But I, I am doing, I'm not trying to talk, but I am doing The Legend of the White Dragon. We'll talk a little bit more about that. The trailer will drop Thursday all over the world on comicbook.com at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can go there on Thursday to watch the trailer. 
it's really a, it's a universe that I'm proud of, and I think a universe that drove me to to have some kind of control over it. And I think that's what drove Dave is to have some kind of control for the fans because we know what fans want. I mean, it was a great acting experience. Michael Matson played my dad. Mark Dukoskis is in it. David Ramsey from Arrow, uh, you know, he's in it. Uh, and it's just a great movie. And Jenna's not here because she's sleeping at the hotel, but she's in it. And uh, I've had nothing, and I tell everyone this. Dave is such a good friend of mine. And also, when it comes to the business, he, it's, it's, he supports me in anything I do. Just like Amy Jo. I sent her a voice text. It was like, Amy, I'm so happy for her directing Superman. I just had a text her today and go, did you listen to my message? Because I just poured out my heart. You didn't even get back to me in two days. God. She was directing. I was so happy with her, so happy for her directing. And it, it's always been, I'd say, us three just because the way things worked. And so we bonded. So I'm so happy for her to direct. I'm so happy for Dave to do what he's doing. And, uh, you know, just, just proud to be here and be a superhero, man, because we were almost made fun of at one point when the show first came out. I auditioned for the Green Ranger, not the Red. It was just one of those things where I was came into with these guys, and it was so I was so excited, and I was, I was going to die. I say that in a nice way. The Green Ranger was supposed to leave, and it was okay. I just wanted to do the best I could, but uh, you know, Dave taught me a lot, and even Amy. As an actress, I'd walk in her room, she was writing all her history down. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm writing my backstory. Can be hard, she's where she's from and all that. I'm like, well, that's cool. I just went out and hit my mark. You know what I mean? Set my line. So what's your backstory on that? Nothing. But uh, with The Legend of the White Dragon, I, I dug deep and, and dug a backstory. And that, that was really, uh, truthfully, from Dave and Amy, just watching them you know, act. It's not easy with the lines that we have on Power Rangers. So a lot of times, like, oh, you're doing Power Rangers. Like, let me see you be cheesy, because it's not easy. <laughs> and kids love cheese. Let's face it. You're right? It's not easy being cheesy. Look, two great projects to look forward to. Legend of White Dragon, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Quantum Continuing. Guys, make sure you guys support Jason. Thank you guys for coming out here. Give it up for him one more time. <laughs> guys, we'll be, uh, I'll be headed at the booth. I'm gonna stop by uh, Comic Con Radio just for a couple couple minutes here. Dave will be at our booth. You'll see us. We'll be right next to each other. We'll be there all day to the last fan standing. We love you all, guys, and thank you guys for joining us. It's such a blessing. But let me take a selfie before before we leave. Thank you guys, give it up one more time! Nothing, forget about it.